Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Just Ask Amir. In this episode, you're gonna be finding out, is modafinil safe? So stay tuned. Hey guys, it's me Amir. So what is modafinil? Well, modafinil, also known as Provigil, is an oral drug similar to amphetamines, but a little bit different. And how it works is, well, let me explain to you actually how it works. So the whole idea with modafinil is it actually increases your dopamine. This supposedly, it's not too many studies showing this. They really don't know exactly how it works. But if you're looking at your neuron over here, you have your dopamine transport over here, kind of similar to SSRIs or we slow down the reuptake of say serotonin, modafinil will do the same thing. So basically you have more dopamine for your brain and what that equals out to, some people report, everybody's different, but some people report more energy, increased concentration, they have better memory, cognitive skills, which are good, okay? Now let's go through what does modafinil actually do? So this is all correlated to studies that have done on it. So it'll increase your section in hypothalamus, so your central nervous system. It'll increase your dopamine, as we talked about, noradrenaline, glutamate, serotonin, and histamine. However, though, we're gonna flip over here. I'll get back to this in a second, though. However, it does decrease your GABA. So just keep that in mind, okay? It increases all of these neurotransmitters and neurohormones, and it decreases your GABA. Now, the question is, is modafinil safe? And I'll just keep this here for a second. Now, there's some studies done, I'm just pulling out some information over here, that certain people with SNPs, so those are single nucleotide polymorphisms, and that SNP code is RS4680, tend to do badly on modafinil, tend to not really have so-called effects from it. And those are a subset of people should, that should kind of avoid modafinil. Period, okay? There's not too many studies done that. Obviously, SNP uh, studies are fairly new. The whole world of testing your genetics with like 23andMe and all these other services are pretty new. But that's something to keep in the back burner that people with certain SNPs don't do very well with and that goes to the whole thing before, you know, what works for me doesn't work for you, okay? Now, my problems with modafinil I'll split up into two, okay? So some people will benefit from it, saying memory, energy, and concentration. However, the question is, why don't you have good energy in the first place? Why don't you have good concentration in the first place? In a short term, you know, if you're increasing your neurohormones or neurotransmitters such as dopamine, you know, glutamate, serotonin, you may feel that euphoric high at the beginning. You may feel that focus and concentration you need. The only you know, issues I see though is creating the negative feedback system, right? So you're getting external stimulation to control internally and your body may become dependent on it. Now I'm not saying it's bad or not, it's just I wouldn't recommend doing modafinil every day, okay? Now this is where I wanna talk about orexins. Now when it stimulates orexins, which it does, as shown in studies, orexins tend to stimulate in a very bad way, I don't want to say bad way, but overstimulates the histamines. And a lot of people who are histamine intolerant or have glutamate issues with the conversion of say glutamine to glutamic acid, they're gonna have negative side effects from taking modafinil. So that's another subset of people that should stay away from, you know, provigil or modafinil, wherever you're located, it's called. So just keep that in mind. If you suffer from histamine issues or you know, glutamic acid issues, I wouldn't recommend modafinil, okay? Now, the question becomes, you know, at the end of the day, should you be taking it? Well, the cost of modafinil is one thing that we gotta talk about. It's not the most cheapest uh, oral prescription drug. It actually became generic right now, so a lot of people can get it over the counter depending on where you live though, right? It really does matter. So it can range anywhere from a dollar to two dollars a pill each single day. I would never ever recommend that anybody out there depends on modafinil. You will become you know, addicted to it. You may not become addicted as an, oh, you know, I need drugs such as cocaine. Internally though, your negative feedback system from your say hypothalamus to the rest of your organs, your neurotransmitters may become dependent on it. Now that being said though, I think there may be some room for people to play around with it. You know, if you don't have that SNP, which I recommend you do that 23andMe, and if you don't have say histamine or um, glutamine issues, 
I say why not? You know, maybe you are going through a rough period in your life that your job is stressing you out or that you have so much mental load going on your body right now that some external remedies can help you out. And this is where modafinil can come into play. And if you can financially afford, you know, taking one to two pills a day that may cost you four dollars a day roughly a very expensive, not expensive, very cheap Starbucks coffee, which sucks, but that's the case. Now, the question goes, what are the dosages for, say, modafinil? I would recommend starting small, so that 50 you know, milligrams and work your way up. Uh, some people like to have two pills a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. Usually they're actually around 50 each, so that works out. So I'll start there, okay? At the end of the day, you know, let me just recap on some things over here. Uh, if you're suffering from depression, if you're suffering from ADD, if you have mental issues, if you have any neurological issues, if you suspect something's happening upstairs, it may be worth a shot for you to check it out. Maybe you can get it from your doc, prescribe, save you some cash. If not, like I mentioned before, it has become open in the public. It's generic for everybody, so you can play around with it. However, it's not for everybody. You should not use it every day. Think of it as a tool, use it sometimes, and just really be careful on when you use it and how you use it. I really hope you enjoy another episode of Just Ask Amir. If you want me to answer your questions, well, comment below this video, but make sure you hashtag me on Twitter. Most of the questions I actually answer come from Twitter or my Facebook page. Number two is make sure you leave some comments. I would like to know what you think of this new video series and what I'm doing. I love the feedback from you guys. And finally, number three, if you want to join over 45,000 Optimal Health members, I'm offering my free biohacking course where I show you in an eight-week course how to optimize your hormones, how to optimize your health, how to optimize your sleep, and kick ass in life. Till then, warriors, remember this. Live, breathe, grow, warrior unleash. Have a great day. You have to understand that stress dictates your physiological response. Okay, what? Now, this is the magic right here. Because 10,000 hours is roughly four to six years, depending on how much time you really put in.